In the last section, we spoke a little bit about the animated module and the three different questions that the animated module helps us answer. So first, what is the current position of any element that we're trying to animate? How is the animation changing? And what element are we attempting to apply the animation to? Those are the three questions that the animated module helps us answer. Let's now start working on a very small, very simple animation, and that's going to help us understand about how we actually apply these three different concepts to our application. So let's take a look at the animation that we're going to put together. Okay, here it is. So we're going to start nice and simple, and then we're going to build up in complexity for there. Remember that the end result that we're working towards is that Tinder swipe deck. We definitely are going to put that together, but first we're going to do a little bit of a warm up on this a little bit more simple, a little bit more straightforward animation, and then we'll go from there. So for this first animation we're going to put together, I want to show a circle on the screen. So at the very top left of the screen, I want to show a circle. And then over the span of like, let's say one second, I want to move that circle down to the bottom right hand screen. So kind of like how you see on the right hand side over here. So we're just doing a simple movement of this element. So just move it here over the span of one or two seconds or whatever we end up deciding. To make this happen, we're going to use the animated module and we're going to ask those three questions about this animation. We're gonna say, how is this thing changing over time? Where is it currently on the screen? And what are we trying to animate? In this case, it is the circle. So let's start writing some code. We're going to figure out how this thing works. In this section, we're going to focus on just getting the app put together uh, and just getting the circle on the screen. And then we'll come back in the next section and start working on the actual animation part of it. So let's get started. I still have my simulator open from the app that we already generated. You'll want to make sure that if you closed your simulator at any point, do make sure that you get it started back up inside of the same project. Once you've got the simulator up and running again, open up your code editor inside of that project directory that you generated. So I'm going to open up my code editor inside of here. Cool, here we go. You'll notice that when we generated our project with Expo, we got a whole bunch of default files inside of here, just some reasonable amount of boilerplate. A lot of the files that are already inside of here help with some configuration around Expo and we may or may not kind of dive into some of the details later on. But for right now, you know, I just really want to focus on the animation side of things. The key file inside of our project is the main.js file. So here it is right here. If you're used to working with React Native, when you generate a project using the React Native CLI, you may remember that we were always dealing with an index.ios.js and an index.android.js file. With Expo, that kind of convention mostly goes away, and we really just work with the main.js file for both Android and iOS applications. So for Expo apps, we're using the main.js file. It's kind of the, the root component for our application. To make sure that everything is working uh, the way I expect, with the simulator and blah, 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 all this kind of good stuff, I'm going to do just one quick little test. I'm going to delete some of the text inside of the main.js file. I'm going to save it, and I'm just going to make sure that my application updates inside the simulator automatically. And it looks like it does. I now see on your app, which matches up perfectly. So it looks like my code editor and the simulator, expo, everything is working as I expect. If you did not see the component automatically reload right here, you can always hit Command R if you're using iOS, and that will refresh the application automatically for you. So feel free to do that as well. Okay, so again, inside this section, I want to put together just a little bit of code to get a ball or a circle to show up on the screen. To do so, we're going to make a separate component and then show it inside of the app component. So we're not going to put the component directly in here. I want to make a separate component to house this animation just to isolate the code from everything else. So we'll start off by making a new folder called source. And then inside of here, we'll make a file called ball.js. So inside of ball.js, we're going to make a new component. We're going to create a view component inside of there. And we're going to apply some styling to it to make it appear to be a circle when it appears on the screen. So we'll import React and component from React Native. 
we'll import view from React Native. And then we will make a component class called ball. And for right now, again, all I really care about is getting this ball to show up on the screen. So I'm only going to define a render method. From here, we're going to create a view. This view is going to be the actual ball. We're going to make the ball by just setting a border radius to it, or a border and a border radius. That's going to cause it to appear to be a, um, a actual ball or a circle when it appears on the screen. So we'll use a little bit of styling to turn this thing into a ball. So I'll apply some styles. We'll say that it's going to end up being styles.ball. And then down at the bottom, we'll declare our styles object. We'll give it a ball property. And this is where we're going to apply some styling to make it into an actual ball. So we'll just hard code a height of 60. We'll give it a width of 60, a border radius of 30, a border width of 30, and a border color of black, like so. I know that I'm going really quickly here, but you know, I want to focus a lot more on the animation stuff and not quite so much on the boring styling stuff. So feel free always to pause the video or slow it down at any point in time to stay caught up with all the typing that we're doing here. Once we start moving over to the animation stuff, we're going to go way slower and we're going to talk about every single last line of code. But again, for right now, just trying to get some stuff to appear on the screen. So last step, we're going to make sure that we export this component. So we'll export default ball at the very bottom. And then we're going to make sure that we import this into the main.js file and show the ball on the screen. So let's go back over to main.js. Towards the top of the file, we'll import ball from source ball. And then I'm going to replace the text tag that's in there already with a ball that we just created. So we just imported the ball, and then we're showing it on the screen inside of the app component. So let's flip back over and see what we've got over here. I very likely made a tiny typo. Um, yep, sorry, at the top of the ball.js file, I have an import React and component from React Native. Boy, that's a bad start. Don't worry, I'll get my act together, I promise. So it should be import from React. We will refresh the application, start the swipe app back up. Okay, so there we go. We've got our ball sitting on the screen. Now you will notice that it is centered on the screen right now. So that's not quite matching up with where we want the ball to be when it starts its animation. So we'll take care of that in the next section. We'll make sure that it appears on the top left of the screen. And we'll also make sure that we start talking about how to animate the thing so it slides down to the bottom right hand of the screen as well. So let's start working on the animation stuff in the next section.